In this problem, we're being asked various questions. We have to find the domain, the range, the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and some missing function values indicated here by these question marks. Let's start by finding the domain. So the domain is the set of all inputs. It's all of the x's you can plug into your function that give you y values. So we'll start by clicking this little, little icon over here, this magnifying glass, and we're looking for all the x values that give us y values. So if you look at this graph, like if I pick an x value here where my cursor is, I get a y value. If I pick an x value here, I get a y value. If I pick an x value here, I get a y value. No matter where I pick an x value, even if I pick one over here where my mouse is, I'm going to get a y value way down off the screen. So I can pick any single number and they'll all give me y values, okay? So negative infinity to infinity should be the answer for the domain. So I'm going to click OK, come back over here, and then I'm going to type in parentheses, and then negative, and then click the infinity symbol down here, and then comma, and then click the infinity symbol again, parentheses, and then hit check answer. Boom, there it is. We want the range. The range is all the possible y values. So you go from the bottom up when you're finding the range. So I'm going to click the little magnifying glass. The arrows here indicate that it goes down forever. So it would be negative infinity all the way to 1, 2, 3, 4. And it includes 4, right? There's no hole there or anything. So it's going to be a bracket. So it'll be negative infinity all the way to 4. Always go from the bottom up to find the range. So negative infinity all the way to 4. So let's see, parentheses, negative infinity, comma 4. And we want to use a bracket because um, it's including it's including that y value. So let's try it. All right, we got it right. <laughs> now we want the x-intercepts. OK, let's go back to our graph. The x-intercepts are the places where the graph intercepts the x-axis. That's what I, I like to think of it as. So where it touches or crosses. So right here where my cursor is, that's 1. It crosses there, so 1. And the other one is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So negative 3 and 1. Those are the places where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to click it here. And then it says, uh, use a comma to separate answers. So negative 3, comma, 1. Moment of truth. Yep, got it right. <laughs> now we have to find the y-intercept. This is kind of a nice problem, so I'm going to go back and click this. So the y-intercept is where the graph intercepts or crosses the y-axis. So it looks like 1, 2, 3. Yep, so 3. So I'm going to hit, hit OK, go back to y-intercept, type in 3. Yep, there it is. And now we want f of negative 2. Okay, so f of negative 2 is the y value when x is negative 2. So let's go back to our graph. So let's see, when x is negative 2, we're up at 1, 2, 3, right? Looks like three tick marks. When x is negative 2, we're up at 1, 2, 3. So 3 is the answer for that one. Going a little bit fast, it's a lot of parts, so I'm trying to keep the video short. And then f of 2, let's go back to our graph. So when x is 1, we're at 0. When x is 2, oh wow, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 5, okay. So f of 2 is the y value when x is negative, when x is 2. So that y value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 5 should be our y value. Here we go. So negative 5. Check answer. And looks like we got it right. That's it.